Hey there, it's Coach Lou. I want to talk to you today about the power of P. Not only the power of P, but the power of PP. And that doesn't mean going to the bathroom and going and taking a pee. It doesn't mean eating pea soup. What it refers to is the how to harness these two P's to get you to the third P. And now you're going, this is a whole lot of P, 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 and P in this morning, guy. What are we talking about here? What is all this P stuff about? Is this the letter of the day? Is this Sesame Street? What is going on? Yeah, it kind of is Sesame Street because I'm about to share with you something as exciting is when a two-year-old starts to learn the alphabet. You know, the letters, the letters and the terminology turns on the mind to being able to relate. And that is what coaching is all about. What we're doing here is trying to get you to have something you're familiar with, relate it in a way it bridges to something you're unfamiliar with so that you go, I get it. I understand this. I bring that concept to this. Now we're good. Now I have an even playing field to learn. If you bring the unknown, I'm going to go right off the camera with my hand there and try to teach the unknown. You have me talking and you have nothing to relate the known and the unknown to and bridge them together. So yes, we are doing some alphabet work today. Just kidding. We're not going to learn the alphabet. What we are going to do is learn the power of P. What am I talking about? Pain and pleasure. The two driving forces behind motivation. Our outcome for today is to get you how to harness that pain, the first P, the second P of pleasure, but not only to do that, but to get P1, P2 to equal the ultimate third P, and that is power. When you harness these two, meld them together, it is like nuclear power going off when it comes to your motivation. If this makes sense to you, you're going to have a really great, uh, you know, uh, session with us today. If this is kind of like, what the heck is he talking about? You're going to have a greater day with me today to figure out what this is, because this is the difference between motivated and unmotivated. Remember to recap a little bit back. There are no lazy people. I truly believe this. Unmotivated? Heck yeah. All you got to do is walk out your door and go to the grocery store or go anywhere and you will see some unmotivated people because they lack the power of why. Right, kids? Why is the power of why. The why, letter Y with the quotes like we put it is truly the W-H-Y. The why, the purpose you're doing something gives you the drive for the motivation, the excitement. But then to get it done, you need the pain and the pleasure push to equal the power, which will get you to break through to the motivation. By now, your head's probably swimming with P's and Y's and everything else. So good news is I'm going to put it all together. We're going to bring it in here into the heart and soul, into the head. Then we're going to bring them together like we do pain and pleasure to create power. So remember, pain and pleasure, power. That could be a little power move for you when you need to get in that mode to get creative or something. Just saying. So pain and pleasure are antithesis, correct? And most of us got the word antithesis already in our vocab. If we don't, I'm going to teach it to you. Antithesis simply means opposite. Pain doesn't feel good. Pleasure feels good. It seems to be on opposite ends of the spectrum on, on both sides, right? Either I feel pain and miserable or I feel good and pleasurable. So how do we use these two things that would seem like a magnet? Think of positive, negative magnet. You're going to get close and they're not going to stick and they're going to go all over the place, right? Yeah. So, and that was a really bad example because that would be the same ones. Bad example, coach. So that's okay. You know what? I keep this very real. Think of the putting the positive and the positive together if you only had one side of the equation. So you try to put the positive side of the magnet and the positive side of the magnet and they're going to push away from each other. Same thing with the negative and they're going to boom. Ultimately, they're going to pop out, especially if you're trying to pinch them between two fingers, which is a distinction. You take the antithesis sides 
they glue together. So could it be, just a thought, that pain and pleasure are two sides of the same thing called power? Using both to drive yourself is going to create this power. So they're antithesis because they're opposite, but yet they attract and stick to each other because they're opposite. These are one of those things that is difficult to explain on a scientific level of why that should be. But when you get the understanding in here, in your emotional understanding, and you use your emotional endurance to work on it till you perfect it, we're going to have a solution that absolutely rocks. So let's look at how pain drives you. And I'll give you an example that might be the type of thing that might be you, or might not be, but you can fill in some of those blanks and go, okay, if I fill in this part, that relates more to me than it did to coach here or, you know, the other person we're talking to. So let's look at how pain drives. Um, in minor ways, and this might not be so minor to you, but it, it's minor compared to the second example that I'm going to give. So let's take pain in a situation like doing your taxes. Usually most people call that a pain in the beep, 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 beep. All right, I'm going to say it. A pain in the ass. Exactly what it is. It is not something that most people, unless you're an accountant, would call exciting. Some people love it. I'm going to give you credit and kudos on that. So when do a lot of people do their taxes? April 14th, when they're due that night by midnight. So before it turns April 15th. What is the deal with that? Well, it's painful. It takes time. You got to go through everything. You got to pull out records. You got to do this and da 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 da. It's a pain. So most people put it off. And this is where you think about it and you go, okay, it is painful. So we don't like to do the things that are painful. We don't go, hey, I'm really excited to do my taxes this year. Let me get on them. Unless you're getting a major tax refund. Then we might talk about how the, how the pleasure plays in there and how to do that. But right now we're going to take it as, oh God, I got to do this. And think, think of yourself as having to pay taxes as well. You got to write a check with it. So let's, let's pour it on a little bit on this one. So for example, it would be painful. Yes, you really don't want to do this. You don't want to write this check. Say it's a pretty big check you got to write. Let's let's play with this a little. Even if that's not your particular case, fill in the blank. Something else you may be doing instead of filing your taxes. That's a real pain in the butt. You really don't want to do it. And it's going to take time and it's annoying and it's, it's a pain. So you're thinking, I really don't want to do this. Well, that deadline comes along and you find out that okay, one of two things are going to happen. If I don't file my taxes by midnight tonight, I'm going to pay a penalty of $2,000 extra dollars and that's going to take away my vacation. How about the other side of that? If I don't pay my taxes tonight, I'm going to lose my $2,000 refund. And I know this may not be accurate, but I'm doing this for example. I'm going to lose that refund. Ooh, that's pretty painful. Either way, it's going to take a bite out of your wallet. It's going to take a bite out of your plans. So you go, oh my God, it's six o'clock. Everybody get the heck out of the office here. Get the heck out of the room. Leave me alone. I've got to get these things filed by midnight. Get out of here. Leave me alone, family. Leave me alone, coworkers. You get in a mood and you finally break through. You crack down and do this, right? You get it done. You get it filed. Do you think you did this out of pleasure? No, you did this out of the pain motivation of not wanting to lose or pay an extra $2,000 or whatever the case is, but it was going to be more painful not to do it. So you finally stepped up. So what motivated you? The pain. That was a pain motivated accomplishment right there. I think no hands down, we can look at it that way unless you absolutely love doing taxes. Then you may have been pleasure motivated, but for most of us, that type of situation where you finally handled something because it was going to be an imminent disaster if you didn't you did it out of the pain of avoid out of avoiding that the pleasure of avoiding it the pain of what you would have paid if you hadn't gotten it done agreed that that is a pain driven situation okay so let's take it a step more into pain driven 
say, for example, somebody grows up in a neighborhood. Uh, maybe they're not even raised by their parents. Maybe they, they've been in a really bad spot as a child. And they want more. And they want out of this. And they don't want gunfire and drugs and this, that, and people beating each other and, you know, 10 different dads or, you know, five different moms raising them or, you know, being in the system. And that person just absolutely breaks out of it because it's just too painful. They don't want this anymore. And they step up and do something great to get their lives on track. There again, we have multiple, multiple examples of people like that that have done very well with their lives. But it wasn't because they grew up in frou-frou homes and were handed everything and said, oh, I just want to take this to the next level. Nothing wrong with that. If you were born into money, God bless you, as long as you're doing the right things moving forward and everything you do is with the right intent, it's okay. I'm not picking on somebody who had a better upbringing than the person in the example that we're giving here, but somebody who was born in the absolute hood should have had no chance, but used the pain to drive them right up and out of it. There's where pain motivates. Pain can be the greatest motivator in the world. So when something comes up and it's painful, don't look at it and go, oh God, I don't want to deal with it. Say, you know what? This is going to take me to the next level. This is going to push me. Remember the word push when it comes to pain. Now, let's take an example of a positive. Somebody comes along and says at work, hey, you know, we like having you around here and you're doing great. If you can get your sales up 10%, we're going to send you for with the, the elite team here for a week in Costa Rica. And it's going to be all expenses paid. And you're going to get a paycheck for that week. So your family's not going to suffer from this. You know, as a matter of fact, we know how much you love your family. We're going to send the whole family. All you got to do is get your sales up by 10% this next month. And you're looking at it and you're going, hey, this is very doable. I might have to work a couple more hours here and there. I might have to step it up and, you know, work my accounts a little better. But, you know, this is very doable. Hey, I'm excited. Next thing you know, you're calling up. Hey, Dave, you know, we got that new product that goes really great with the other stuff you guys have been using. And uh, let's, you know, let, let's give it a try. This is the month you've been telling me we want to do this. Let's do it this month. I think this would be great. And, you know, everybody you talk to, you're talking about what you do and, you know, and you're, you're, you're holding group conference calls with people that get them to help you and you're excited and you're on fire and that energy's there because you're going for that carrot. You're jumping forward. It's pulling you forward, right? Think about this. That draws you towards it because it's exciting. And you hit that and your brain learns to love pleasure. The pleasure drove the motivation. It pulled you towards it. That motivation draws you. That pleasure draws you to the motivation. So I think some of you are starting to get a little light bulb going on and going, I think I have an idea where Coach is going with this, right? I, I hope so. If not, and you're, you're kind of still spinning, it's okay. I was the first time I learned about pain and pleasure. So you know, learned about how it really affects motivation. We all know about it from a kid. You, you, you learn very young, and that's my last example. You know, when you're a kid and you make a goofy little noise initially, oh, how cute, he's talking. Bullshit, he's got gas. He's burping. You wait till you're five and you go into the classroom and go, bleh, and you're in the principal's office or, you know, depending on the school you go to, you got a ruler across the hands. Well, it was cute when I did it before I got pleasure. Now I'm getting pain. You can see where mixed signals start to come in. Or a kid does something cute and they get really rewarded for it. And as they go on, people, adult, you know, adults reward them more because maybe they've learned to be funny in a respectful way where everybody loves them because they're so cute and they're so funny. And an actor, an actress, a performer is born there because they learn that entertaining makes people happy and that gives them pleasure. So it gives them that pull to go towards something like that. 
there's so many facets to this, and we, we got to keep this in mind, not for only driving ourselves, but my God, our children and our, our next generations, to remember how we form what they link the pleasure and pain thing to. It, it's really amazing. So how do we combine this? Obviously, there's not one that's better than the other or one that's more valuable than the other. It's different stages of the motivation, different stages of a product, different stages of life, project, not product, that we're, we're after. What are we going to use to drive us the most? You with me on this? It's not an equal. I got to give myself so much pain and so much pleasure on every single thing we do. How do you combine them? Well, initially, a lot of times, life is the first thing in the world to come along and give us some pain. External factors are generally the things that will give you pain quicker than they will pleasure. Think about it. Um, take it in the workplace. You've got a great idea. You take it to a manager and they go, oh, I don't know. We've always done it this other way. Well, that's kind of painful. So you might want to step up and go, all right, I'm going to prove you wrong. That's going to give you the little bit of push. Or they might go, yeah, hey, you're going places, kid. Let's, let's work on this. That, that pleasure and that acknowledgement, wow. Well, so usually it's probably a little bit more pain knocking you upside the head. And then as you start to push against the pain and prove the point, you start to get some pleasure because you're growing. And as you're growing, that gets recognized by you, the people around you, your creator. The more you're growing, the more doors open for you. And this is, you know, not a religious uh, thing here, although it, it could be for you. That's fine. I truly believe that God, if, as such, rewards you for the, the more effort you put in. I, I really believe you got to take your part. You don't just sit back and things happen. If, that's, if you're sitting back and things are happening, it's usually the more painful things. So the pain and pleasure is a part of everything you do when it comes to motivation, when it comes to growth, contribution, all of it, all the important stuff, it's pain and pleasure driven. It's just that simple. So look at it this way. In most cases, the pain is your initial push. I'm going to push you, push you, push you, push you till you go over that edge and finally get shit done or finally step up and say, I've had enough. So as your pain is pushing, that, that can be tiring after a while. That can be really, really, really tiring. But let me tell you something. When pain comes and hits you, it is powerful. And it's a major driver at first. But if you're constantly in pain, think of an injury. If you're constantly in pain, how easy is it to smile? How easy is it to feel good? After a while, pain will take you down. Pain in itself for a driver is a basic life instinct to keep you alive and keep you going. Pleasure, on the other hand, comes along and goes, you're doing really good. Let me pull you towards me. I like this feeling. This is great. I want more of this, less of the pain. Here's where the antithesis comes in here. So the pull of the pleasure pulling you and the push of the pain behind you is going to be the thing that really gets you going. So look at it this way. Here's your pain. Here's your pleasure. The pain's pushing. The pleasure's pulling. Look how smooth that goes. Rather than pain against pain, just pushing back and forth. Or too much pleasure where you're just scatterbrained. You need them both. Welcome pain. It's the thing that gets you off your ass, off the couch, and out in the world moving, shaking, and hustling, and going initially because you get that point where you go, I've had enough, and you step up, especially when there's massive pain attached. And then look at the pleasure as the excitement, not the floating through going, oh, this is lovely. The yes, I am excited. This is rocking. Look what I can do. Look what I can share. Fe that feeling in here where you're alive. But that after a while would burn itself out too. Compare it to summer and winter. In the summertime, everything's beautiful, great, sunny, hot. But after a while, you're looking for some cooler weather. You're looking for some, some growth. Winter, cold. 
that time of year gives you the growth because you got to get that survival side into you. It's a little bit painful, but now you've got it. But you can't live there. You'll freeze to death. Same as you can't live at the beach and all the time because you'll fry. So, you know, you need both sides of that. The pain is your push. The pleasure is your draw. The pain is your muscle builder. The pleasure is your massage afterwards so your muscles can heal and grow. Does this make sense? Do these analogies work for you? I certainly hope so because I like to bring stuff home to you in plain English as opposed to a lot of theoretical terms which you could go, okay, this is great. I could learn this if I already had a medical degree. Uh, these terms you're using would be a lot easier. And, it, and it's so much simpler. It is so much simpler just to figure out what drives us. So we're going to take a little workshop right here. We're going to do this. Yes. We're going to take something that's affecting you right now. Not me. Not my example. I want your example on this. I want it to be something that hits home. What is something you've been putting off because it's downright painful? Could be something as simple as doing your taxes. Could be something uh, as drastic as a doctor's visit you need to get to could be getting a raise at work, could be getting divorced, if that's where you're at in life, could be decision whether to open a business, quit your job, go forward with something else. What's a major thing you've been putting off that if you continue to put it off, it's going to get more and more painful, or it's gotten so damn painful already, you go, I can't take this anymore. And it could be a relationship. Your, your marriage is about to fail. And I'm not saying jump up and after the session go get a divorce or file. What I am saying is that they, if that's the case, it's the time to take enough of that pain and try to do everything you can to make it work and give it a timeline. So that's a whole different thing. That's relationship coaching, which we will get a lot of over the next few years with these series because I'm committed to keeping the Monday Motivation Series going and going and going. And I want it to be useful for you guys. So just think about it. Close your eyes a second. I just want you to close your eyes. Listen to my voice. I close them, please. Yes, close them. I see you. This is a two-way screen here. I see you. Close those eyes. And I want you to think really hard on something you've been putting off. And it's been painful. And it will be painful to initially to tackle it. But it's getting more and more painful to you. It's wearing more and more on you. Make it something powerful. Make it something very powerful that would be life-changing if you could get past this. But right now, it's pretty damn painful. Three, two, one. Do you have it? Are you ready to go forward? Awesome. Okay, so write down on one half of your page all the pleasure. What? This is supposed to be about pain. What the hell am I talking about? Yeah, just bear with me on this. Write down all the pleasure you've gotten from not accomplishing this yet. Think about it. Seriously, think about that. What pleasure is this giving you because you haven't started it, handled something, done something, what it is that you already have in mind? What's the pleasure you've gotten from not dealing with it? Okay. Now you kind of have an idea of what's been driving you, right? Hey, you know, don't have time, don't want to deal with it, don't want to waste the time, don't want to face it, don't want to face that maybe you're taking a big part of this situation, whatever it is, and it's, maybe it is you. Maybe we've been blaming other people for the situation, and it's been painful, and it's easy to blame somebody else for your pain, but not accept the responsibility. Maybe it's you. That's a real buzzword lately. But you know what? I've been listening to a lot of audio myself that really excites me about that concept because it's so true more often than not. So maybe it is you. So at this point, shake that off. Snap out of it. I want you to close your eyes again. I want you to get really dark with me here. While we're thinking about this, what's going to happen six months from now if you don't handle this? You know what it is. You don't have to share it with anybody else. Six months out, how much tougher is it going to be? How much deeper in the hole are you? How much of your life have you wasted? Take it out a year from now. Now, it's not accomplished. You haven't begun it. You haven't dealt with it. How bad is it now? Think about that. Take it in your heart and feel it. Take it out 5, 10, 15 years 
unresolved, weighing on you, growing, getting bigger, pushing your shoulders down, pushing your head forward, dark cloud over you every day. How much damage has that done over the years? All right, rewind. Good news, it hadn't happened yet. So let's look at the pleasure. How do you, what, what pleasure would you get? What if it was already done? Would you be less stressed? Would you feel less weight on your shoulders? Would you breathe easier? Would you be celebrating? Would something be a lot greater in your life? Would you have done something and made changes that rescued something or saved a beautiful relationship in your life that you would look back and go, God, if we hadn't changed this, we'd have thrown it all away or our business would have dropped or I would have lost my job or I just would feel like general crap because I would feel like I just didn't get something done, handled, that you know you're capable of. So now I want you to take a deep breath, realize nothing's changed. We've only been here a few minutes talking. But let me tell you, you've taken a little journey, hopefully. And if you haven't, rewind this and really go through it because it's useful. Now think about this. You now have the power to change. You know how grinding bad and how bad that can hammer you over a six month, a year, a five and a 10 and a 15 year period, how much weight that can shove down on you, how old it makes you, how it damages everything that you have. You've got that pain. Do you want that? You want it? If, you, if you're really the kind of person who wants to live in that pain, turn this off right now because I don't think you want to stay there. But use it. That is your greatest gift right now. If it scares the ever-living daylights out of you, run, run, run from that pain. Let it, let it push you as you're running, baby. Let me tell you because that's the key there. But the other side of that is get excited. It hasn't happened yet. What can you do? You know the steps of how you set a goal, how you go after a goal and all that. We've covered that in the series before this. And if you're starting here, shut this off and go back. Start at Motivation 101 and go forward because it all builds one upon the other. So here we go. Now we've got the pain is really dark, the pleasure. Picture, you've got this handled today. It's already done. No, no, no. I know you're going, no, I haven't even started. <laughs> That's for the pain. Put it away. Picture it already done. Done. How do you feel different today if we're already done? Oh, you can breathe. Oh, your stomach's not as tight. Oh, wow, you're looking forward to actually going home or going to work or wherever it is that the challenge is. Hey, different feel. How are you going to show up now? A little more playful, a little more happy, a little more committed to what you're doing because it's already done. You've handled the challenge. Doesn't mean it's really done totally yet. You know the steps to doing this, but picture it done. What if it is done today? What if it's one simple thing you needed to do and it's done? Even if it's distasteful doing it and it's done. Take that out six months. Yeah, close the eyes. Take it out six months. Picture it. What's different in six months because you handled that shit today? Even if it took a month, what's different in six months? What's different a year from now? What's different? five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now. Contrast that to the picture you were seeing earlier. How different is it? If it's not different, the thing you're going after is not really valid to go after. It's not that important, but think about this. How different of a destination do you have? You started right here. Darkness is falling off here. If you're going in the right direction, Boom. Darkness gone. Now you're up on top here. This is the top. Here it is. You win. It's that simple. Yes, there's steps. There's work. There's things involved in this. I'm not going to tell you to sit there and go, oh, positive versus negative. Happy. Da, da, da. No. I'm not against meditation, by the way. Love it. But you got to take action. You got to do the part. But you've got to get in in your soul. This hurts. I don't want this anymore. I don't want this gripping on my chest. This feels good. I want more of this. Push away from that. Pull towards this. And you're good to go. And I'm glad you can see the visuals on this. And if you're listening to this on an audio only, I'm going to have to probably do some additional prompts on there to kind of give you some of the visuals to the actions on this. So what we need to do, honestly in everything that we do as far as the pain, pleasure, motivation, 
is if it's really massive pain or massive pleasure on one side, that's great. If it's stuff that's got to be dealt with and it's a little bit painful and it would feel better if it got done. The problem is that's the stuff that gets in that wishy-washy middle section of no man's land that ends up becoming a big deal later on, whether it's your health, whether it's relationships, career, businesses. It's that wishy-washy stuff that's really not too bad right now, not really that much fun, not that great, that'll come and bite you right in the ass. An immediate issue that has to be handled right now and the pain is there and then the pleasure of actually getting it done. Those are powerful punch and pull motivators. Those things get attention. It's that middle of the road stuff that'll bite you long long run. So how do we get on that stuff? Maybe the more mundane stuff rather than you're, you're living in a shack with people that are beating each other up and doing drugs all day long and you're a teenager and you're going, this isn't for me, and you bust out that door and never come back and you, you get into school and you start pulling forward and you, you make that decision and you become something when, when all the odds were against you. That's powerful. Yeah. I really need to start doing my bookkeeping a little better, you know, in case I get an audit instead of, oh my God, we got an audit tomorrow and I got to do five years of books. So, but the difference is how do you take that potent motivation? Like, oh my God, I got an audit tomorrow and put that type of effort into getting your bookkeeping straight. And I'm using this as an example, as opposed to you're probably not going to get audited and you're letting stuff slide. Receipts are here, there. You don't really keep the books. Oh, it's okay. You know, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. How do you assign that same motivation? Because that's what this is all about, right? Monday motivation. How do you assign that same motivation like you're facing that audit tomorrow? How, how, how would you put that energy? Well, you amplify it. Put a microphone on it. You know, you guys know that know me really personally well, know that we also have the auction business. How do I save my voice and give them my maximum impact? Okay, the pain of straining my voice a little bit wouldn't be too terrible. Pain of losing my vocals would be horribly painful. That would be painful on both businesses. But a little bit of, you know, strained vocal, not going to end the world. And then the pleasure of really reaching people. So you got to amplify it. Because the people in the crowd listening, whether it's me speaking or auctioning, the pleasure is amplified by the amplifier. The pain is reduced by the amplifier. But the pain of, oh my God, I won't be able to do this if I destroy my voice, so I use an amplifier to create that. If that makes sense, you amplify the pain, you amplify the pleasure in here, the perceived. You know, sometimes you've got enough pain, you've got enough pleasure, but if you amplify how it feels, that's when you're going to get stuff done. That's when you're going to get effing going. Not when it's a little uncomfortable or, oh, that would be nice to have. Whenever somebody says, oh, my, that would be nice, or... I'm, this is kind of annoying, but you're not going to get something cooking there. If you're at that point where I can't take another minute or I want this, not would be nice. I want this. I want this and know what you want. You know, remember, get specific building upon what we talked about before. I want this. I might be right here right now and I might be happy with it, but I want this. That's the pleasure. Or the, I can't take this, I'm done! That's the pain, not the, this is annoying, I really don't like this. If you see the difference in my physiology, that's how you can do it. Remember, trigger it, your physiology, put your physical body in the state. You can't say, I'm done with this. You gotta, I am done! That's the kind of feeling of pain. You can't say, I kinda like that. You gotta be like, I want it, I'm excited, I'm ready to go. Am I faking that? No, I just know how to fire this off. That's the difference. I am really excited when I say that, and I feel it. My whole body gets excited, and I don't even know what I'm excited about. I do. It's reaching you guys and showing you. And when I get mad, I'm telling you, I'm mad. That's, that's, I'm there. I don't like that feeling as much, by the way. Shake it off. But you've got to really feel it. You can't say, I'm mad. 
mm, your body, your mind, your physiology is going to say BS. So then your focus, you got to focus. But I'm going to say once you're past that initial jump start and push with the pain, don't focus as much on the pain because you want to start to direct your focus more towards the pleasure and let the pain be back here pushing, but let that pleasure be drawing you to it because now your focus, you want, you're going to go more where you focus. Remember from the map and stuff like that, you're going to go in the direction you're focused. So use your focus more towards the positive, uh, the physiology, whichever is needed at the moment and the psychology, you know, What's it really going to take? What do you really, really want out of this? And that is still kind of focus. But you really got to know what's it going to give you in here. There's your power of why. That's where your spirit comes in. Your spirit to God, your spirit to your creator, your spirit within yourself. That's when you know in my heart this is what I want. And I will use these twin P's to get me to the triple P. It's like a triple play. I'm not even that much of a baseball fan, but I know that one. Triple play. But seriously, P plus P equals triple P. And that's the cool part of it. You'd say P plus P equals two P's. No. It, re it gives you the triple P. The ultimate power the power of the physiology to break through whatever you need to, the power of the focus to know where you're going, and then the power of the spirit of why I'm doing it. Because that that's what will give you that emotional endurance we've talked about. It's the why, your purpose, your power. This is why I'm doing this. This is a cool thing, and I know this one's getting into a little bit more nuts and bolts and, and getting a little crazier. This is, this is you know, where people start to get to the edge of some of these trainings and go, is he a nut? No, not really, because this stuff makes sense. Can he go from angry to happy and all that and really look like he's doing it? Wow, he's a good actor about that. No, I'm not a good actor. I set those states so I can fire them off at will when I need them. You know, you're driving down the road and it's a nice, warm, sunny day and somebody comes up to your door with a gun. You don't want to go, hey, how you doing today? Would you like to have my car, sir? Um, don't worry, I'll leave the kids in the back for you, too. No, you're going to be a stark raving maniac, I hope, that takes that gun and shoves it sideways somewhere where he'll never forget it. Or go through the night. preferably i should recommend you drive through the light and get away from them because retreats your safest bet but you know what i mean you're going to go into and i'm going to defend my family state of mind you're not going to be going hey guy you know you don't really want to do this that that's not going to work in that situation right so you've got to be able to fire off that aggressive and we're going to talk about archetypes down the road that aggressive nothing's going to stop me and i'm going to win and you know my life depends on it mindset. And then there's the time where, you know, you've got to express love and total compassion where you don't want to walk in and look at your spouse and go, I love you. It's not going to do it. Or they need you so much and you just open your heart and love. And you need to be able to fire that off just the same way. You know, you're not a tough ass hard guy or gal all the time. And you're not a, a floating around on the clouds angel all the time. That is a good representation of the power of pain and pleasure. Let the pain be the tough ass. Let the pleasure be the angel. And your whole myriad of other emotions, etc. in between. But use those two. Because those are your two potent drivers of motivation. Because this is really what this series is about right away. Right now is motivation. So... Keep in mind that I'm directing a lot towards that, but there's a lot of other really cool stuff. So you've seen me go from absolute mean animal to cloud floating angel in a snap of a finger. So would you like to know how to do that? I bet. So that's going to bring me to recapping today. What have we learned? We learned the driving forces of pain and pleasure are actually like the magnet 
They've got to be both there where they get together and pull you and push you towards where you're going. So they're actually two parts of motivation that fit together. They're two puzzle pieces. So even though they're antithesis and very opposite, they attract together to get you your result. We got that one, right? We know how pain pushes as a driver. We know how pleasure pulls as a driver when it comes to getting to where you go. So when you get them operating together, you double, triple, quadruple your speed. And generally, at least triple. That's where the pain plus pleasure equals a triple P of power. So just in these are silly little analogies to get you to remember this stuff when you start to go off track. We figured out how to combine them using the physical, the focus, and your spirit. How to get it all, that power of why in your spirit. So what we're going to do next week, and this is where it gets really exciting. Would you like to learn how to fire off the pain and pleasure state at like the snap of a finger? At like the wiggle of an ear? How could you do put yourself in that state without going, okay, now is a good time for me to get in. Bam, you're done. Now is the time to get into that powerful pain state. You're gone by the time you got to think about it if it's a life-threatening situation. Then you don't have to think about it. You got a trigger, boom, you go. On the other side of that is how do I get in that state of pleasure to pull myself towards what I want? to make things happen in, a, in an ambitious, in a way that's helping others, in a way that's positive. Generally, the pain is a negative feeling, although it's still a positive push. That makes sense. There's another antithesis, but they fit together. So are they really opposite? We could get really deep on that stuff, and we're not going to. Just understand pain pushes, pleasure pulls, you need them both to accomplish and do whatever it is that you're after. Without each of them, and they don't always have to be equal. Sometimes a little bit of pain and a whole lot of pleasure gets it done. Sometimes a whole lot of pain because it's a, I've got to do this and I've got to dig deep to find a little bit of pleasure in it. You need both to get anything done to grow and to go forward in this life. So next week, I'm going to teach you some shortcuts it might be a quicker one, a quicker little session. We're going to go over how to do an anchor of pain and pleasure. And it's very simple. What I need you to do between now and then is write down uh, five, six, ten of your most painful moments in life and same number of the most pleasure, amazing things that you've ever had happen in your life. And if you do that for me, we'll put those to work for you next week. In the meantime, I encourage you to live with energy, passion, and by all means, always live your dream. Make sure you're connecting with us at RevitalizeLife.com. And we're always posting these on our Monday Motivation blog. And the cool thing is I'm going to do a live segment about this on tomorrow morning because I'm filming this the evening before on the same subject with some different twists and some different things. So it'll be live at Facebook.com forward slash revitalize life broadcasting live monday um tomorrow morning at 7 30 a.m sharp if it's 7 31 don't get mad at me if it's 7 29 we might start early so be ready i'm going to broadcast that on revitalize life's page on facebook and the rebroadcast will also be the recording and the replay will be available on the site as well so you'll probably see that first and then this is your training and also on the blog, we will have some written content for you, and then we'll lead into next week. And next week is going to be exciting. So in the meantime, till I see you in person or we connect again, live with energy, passion, always live your dreams. This is Coach Lou Bronstein telling you have an awesome day.